I'm going to split this 3,000 pound Myrtlewood root ball in half with my chainsaw and then I'll join the two halves and carve a sculptural table. Yeah, ready for the cut. What do you think? It's a nice piece of wood. It's healthy and it's got burl in a lot of space places. It's nice sized. See, then I'll cut it through about like this, both pieces, and that's underneath. I'll leave it an area where it'll bolt together. Looks like it's really healthy wood. Yeah, it's very healthy wood, and I think it'll be very interesting. See, it has a lot of color in it. it goes from the yellow to the chocolate browns. You got a really good clear line, straight line. Yeah, it looks like a flat. I got a flat plane. That's what's important about laying it out flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to lay out a line around a shape like that. Mm -hmm. Should make a nice piece though. What's the next, um, what's next? What's the next stage? This will be the top of the table. These two pieces will bolt together. And then I have to figure out where the legs are gonna come in when they bolt together because I have this area comes down here that'll help form the legs and so I'll have to remove wood and then shape the legs you know in relationship to how they bolt together mm -hmm. so both sides have that same thing I have to work out well so you get it down to about a ton it, well I'll get it down to probably about 500 pounds wow. but right now it's about 1500 pounds wow so I, I don't want to move it around <laughs> no. so all of this will form the, the legs to the piece and there's a lot of sand and rocks in this so see I have to I have to take an axe and, a, uh, and adds and work a lot of this off before I can carve on it at all. Because it just immediately dulls, dulls the chain. If you hit your chain with that, the whole chain's dull immediately. Mm -hmm. Fucking sand encrusted and it'll take, it'll totally dull my chainsaw. So it'll take probably better part of a day just to remove the outside of this so that I can even work on it. So here's the two, two pieces that'll get bolted together. Wow, they're totally different. Yeah. Totally transformed. Well, and, and it takes a while to work them down like this. Hardly can recognize them as being the same piece of wood. No, and then you won't recognize it again once I actually get the tables carved out. Yeah. So this is a smaller chainsaw. Yeah, this is a smaller chainsaw. The other one has a 42 inch bar on it. This one's only a 28 inch bar. It's a lot lighter saw. I think I've got them light enough now to be able to take them down to uh, the studio area to work. Mm. Then I'll work with an electric chainsaw a lot next. So these are the legs, the underneath, underside that we're seeing here? Yeah, this is the underside. And those are where I'm trying to leave where the good wood was of the root section to make legs. So they'll be carved mm -hmm. shapes that'll fit whatever the... I come up with it goes on the top. And how have you moved the blocks to where they are now? Are they heavy enough to light enough to lift or shift? Uh, they're light enough to put on a, a hand hand truck and move. Uh huh. So what weight would you say that is? Guess. Uh, it's not bad now. It's probably only about three or four hundred pounds. 
Probably about 400 pounds, I guess. I usually underestimate weights. I mean, I can't lift it. Alrighty. See, basically, it's going to go together something like that. So it looks like it's going to be a coffee table. So how much will dry out when it's when it's dried from the green wood stage? Oh well, when I, I'll work this all down. So there'll be probably a quarter the amount of wood that's here now left after I work it down to a shape. Yeah. And then probably after I'm all done. I'd be surprised at weigh, if it weighed any more than 100 pounds. The first thing I got to do is I got to cut this and cut this and get the join area figured out. Mm -hmm. So that those are the pieces that actually fit together. That way I can start, you know, configuring designing design. what I, configuring the design I want on it. What's happening right here? The swoop. Well, that's what what you call foxtailing. You get a chatoyancy, but so there's just three shapes, even though it's a very active uh, piece. Where are they? This shape goes through here. Now I like to draw the pieces. I like to draw on the piece itself. And it fits the fits what's going on with the piece of wood itself. And so this is ready now. I'll start cutting out with a chainsaw. I'll start cutting out around the perimeter the shapes. Ah, yeah. And then I'll uh, start working down. Uh, like probably, I'll probably work this level down first. Trying to keep the line in there so that I don't lose it. It's really easy to lose the shapes, mm. even though I've drawn them on. Lovely. Reminds me of a butterfly. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. Amazing how much car I didn't really realize how much carving you can carve in using the edge of the blade. Like, I try to uh, areas that I have a lot to take out of, I try to chunk it out and yeah. then I have to shape it. It's taken on quite a nice shape now. Yeah, uh, amazing. I, I, I want to thin it down some. So yeah. probably that's all I'll do now. I like to work it down to three inches, four inches. It's three inch, about three inches thick this way, so that's good for drying. And then when I, uh, after it's dry, I'll finish, finish shaping everything and get it to the dimension I want. On the back of the table here, where the bolts are, is yeah. amazingly s strong. What's it? What's the future plan? Well, eventually, I don't exactly have it planned out, but you won't see the bolts. I'll probably inset them and then plug it. Ah. Yeah, from being stocky, now it has a lovely shape. The next cap is the kiln. How long will it stay in the kiln? Uh, six weeks. Huh?